everyone, Chantelle Girardi here from Online Business Marketing and just fresh back off the boat, or should I say the plane, from coming back from Sydney for four days at the Business Blueprint Conference. So I'm going to share with you today some of my takeaways um, from this. And I know Daryl was there online, Kim was there in person, um, and I'm sure everyone else's learnings and experiences were different. So I'm thinking that especially this first bid um, is going to be new content for even those people because um, it literally is my takeaway from it. But the first thing that I wanted to say is, is that I practice what I preach, meaning that I'm a coach and I expect people to invest in themselves to work with me and follow direction. And I do the exact same thing. I spend money on coaches so that I can be a better coach and mentor for everyone as well. Um, so this morning I went for a, uh, a run. It's the second run, three kilometer run that I've done in a while since my injury, um, which was more like a waddle in all, in all, in all truth. Um, but two months ago, I went to the gym and a personal trainer said, let's do 10 sets of barbell squats 10 times. And my ego stepped in and I went, yep, 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 I can do that because, you know, I used to do 100 kg squats and I was like, yes, I can do it. Anyway, threw my back out. And over the last two months, I've been at physios, I've been at chiros, I've been in pain. There's some days that I've been in bed. It's cost of lots of money and lots of time, basically because um, ego got in the way. But I want to share with you a story about my physio who asked me to run while I'm waddling right now, okay? And so basically my physio, he's here on the Gold Coast, he said to me, I've got these exercises for you. Now I looked at these exercises and I'm going, these exercises are so silly, they're so ridiculous. And he's going, but it's going to improve your strength, it's going to improve your mobility. Um, and then in the last session, he said to me, I want you to run. And I was like, I, I'm still waddling. I'm two months in now. I'm literally still waddling when I'm working, <laughs> while, while I'm walk, walking. So he said to me, um, he said to me, come out over here, walk along this narrow thing and I'll watch you. So anyway, I had to walk up and down like a supermodel waddling, up and down as a supermodel waddling while he's watching me. And while he's watching, he's watching, he's going, don't stop. And he's watching. And he says to me, right, I actually want you to run. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm seriously not even walking. And he said to me, with my expert eye, I can see that your body has gotten into bad patterns over the while. It's gotten into bad patterns. And basically, your body's just trying to continue to protect itself. Okay, and I'm sharing the story because when I talk about some of the stuff later on, you're going to go, okay, that makes sense. We're just trying to protect ourselves a lot of the time. So he said to me, fine, you got to run. So anyway, I went for a run and literally, honestly, I feel absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I've run half marathons. I've run tri done triathlons. I've done Olympic distance triathlon. I'm literally running and I'm like, waddle, 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 waddle. And I'm thinking this guy's absolutely crazy. But I did all the silly exercises he told me to do. I did all the warm-ups. I did all the mo mo mobility stuff he wanted me to do. And guess what? I went for a ran. And at the end of the run, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I actually feel the muscle memory coming back into my legs. I have no pain. And I'm actually feeling like I'm rec recovering quicker. Even though my head, I'm going, this guy's crazy. What does he know? Okay. So sometimes I think we think we know better. <laughs> and we only know better from what we know, right? Um, and sometimes we get challenged by other ideas, but we sit comfortably with what we do know. So putting ourselves in uncomfortable situations is a big eye opener. For me, over the weekend, I messaged Daryl and Rachel, and we've got a private little group. And I said to them, I'm seriously struggling with imposter syndrome. I was sitting with business owners and you guys have all seen it on my laptop and even those that are um, watching the recording, I've got the screensaver that says I'm manifesting a, I'm creating a $500,000 business by 2025. These business owners were going, I am creating $100,000 a week. I'm creating a $2.5 million business per, per year. I'm like, like, and I'm sitting there with my little laptop with my little screensaver. So imposter syndrome sets in. Right. Um, but I think it's really important for us to be aware of where our thoughts are coming from, because our thoughts are actually just trying to protect us and they can often encourage, um, encourage us to not progress with what we're doing. So it reminded me of another running story. 
when I joined a triathlon club, they said to me, run up, we've got to run up hills and we've got to do repeats. And I was like, man, I can barely run in a straight. Plus, I'm just learning to do triathlon. So I got to swim, then I got to run. Uh, sorry, swim, then cycle, then run. Now you want me to do hill repeats, just run up and down a hill, and I could barely do it on a straight. And every time I went there, I went, oh my gosh, this is so hard. This is terrible. I absolutely hate this. And what I was really doing was just feeding my thoughts and making up assumptions about what that experience was going to be like. And I actually messaged Alison earlier to say, because Alison's a kinesiology, a kinesiologist, we're putting energy to those thoughts. We're putting energy to those thoughts. So my experience of running those heels became, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. I can't do it. And in fact, my whole body would um, seize up, would be tough. And I'd feel like I was hundred kgs running up these hills. But then my coach said to me, then my coach said to me, um, when you run up the hills, I'm not sure who this person is trying to come into our room. I'll let them in. Maybe I have to kick them out. Let's see. Not quite sure who that is. Um, so then we went, okay, he said to me, when you're going up the hill, think about the little um, train. You know, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I know I can. I know I can. I know I can. And he said, when you're going up the hill, just chant the entire time. I know I can. I know I can. I know I can. I know I can. Um, and he said, visualize yourself being on a travelator and the travelator is just moving forward. So I went, oh, what does he know? This is ridiculous. That's not going to make it any lighter than what it is. And guess what? Those hills became effortless and the road became, my body became lighter. My, just from thinking and saying it, it had an effect on my body and my physical experience of it. And I now, to this day, absolutely love running up hills. Still, I love running up hills. So listening to your coach is really important. Listening to your thoughts, not so important sometimes <laughs> or most times. Um, let me just see. Da, 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 da. So my last running story, I promise you, for today, um, and it's funny how this all came this morning while I was running, but... When I uh, made it through to nationals, we were able to join the national team and we were able to train for like a week at the, at the national tra training team. And this coach stood there and he said, right, you're going to do like 20 laps around this field. But, and I, I can't remember the kilometers, so I'm just going to make it up, Daryl, because I know you run. So I'll just make it up. But say, for example, I ran at seven kilometers per hour. He said that we had to watch our watches and we only had to run at five kilometers an hour. Okay. That was our pace. And I went there and I was like, this is ridiculous. This guy doesn't know me. He knows nothing about me. What a load of BS. I'll just go in the middle. I'll just go at six kilometers an hour. And what do you think happened? Round three, I was throwing up on the side and I was <laughs> in cramp. My body was cramping and I felt absolutely sick. Like, and all the other people who listened and followed the kilometers that the coach gave them continued to run effortlessly around the podium, like around the, the um, field. Um, so sometimes we think we know better and sometimes our ego and our thoughts get in our way. And for me, I think that a lot of the conference brought that to me. And this is why I said, you know, Kim and Daryl's experience may have been different, but it made me look at my ego. It made me look at imposter syndrome. It made me look at my thoughts and question them. And it made me think, you know, are we second guessing what coaches tell us and we're not fully doing what they're telling us to do? And perhaps that's not why we're getting the results that we could be getting. So looking at all the people in the room and all these amazing people that I got to hobnob with for over that period, there were a couple of things that just stuck out for me. And, um, you know, I was surrounded by these millionaires and I was, I was catching my, my head the entire time and my ego coming into play. Um, but there were a couple of things that I saw that were a common denominator. Many of them were, well, actually, most of the people that I was hanging with were all into mindfulness all into health. They all ate healthy. Every time we went to a restaurant, they ordered healthy food. <laughs> they all drank like fish. <laughs> but they all exercised and they all did stretching and they ordered mindfulness and they ordered outside time. And these were actual values and priorities and things that they had. And I reckon that's the only reason they could drink so much. 
<laughs> and I hope none of them actually come back and watch this. But um, it was really, really important for me to note that. So I just want to see if there's something here that I've missed. Okay. So your method may have worked previously, but if it doesn't work right now, then something needs to change. And sometimes rather than just changing little bits and pieces, maybe you just should follow the whole recipe rather than bits and pieces of the recipe. And stubbornness is actually only a, uh, a fear of change. So if you're stubborn, that's actually a fear of change. And having courage to trust someone else and having the courage to try new things and challenging things inevitably will raise your vibration and show the universe your commitment. Now, this is important because I've been talking to many of you and a lot quite in the, in, in, in the last little while about the magnet that you are. Whatever the magnet is that you are sending out is what you're going to be attracting. But just having the courage, and this is something that I read in the book, uh, Letting Go, and I'll post it in the notes. Um, just having the courage just to name it and acknowledge it and take action on it will immediately raise your vibration. Um, and that's really important because that in itself just will give you the... Um, the, it will change your frequency and help you to attract better things. Um, so one of the things that kept coming up at the conference was how we've got to move from egocentric to heart centric. Um, and we need to focus more on the impact that we make to the world, not just to your customers, but to the world. It's about the impact that you make. And that is what heart centric is. So we need to listen more to the wisdom of our soul and less to the voices inside our head because those voices are trying to protect us and they're filling, they are filling your thoughts with glimpses of previous failures, beliefs, worries, and fears. Now, joy and laughter are always available to you and you can always choose that. We are not our thoughts. Um, so laughter is the best way out of your head um, and many of these words literally come from the conference, so I'm not going to claim them as my own. Laughter, love, and vulnerability can help break stress pattern. Laughter is an orgasm of the mind, which releases happy hormones and endorphins and improves your mood. And because of that creativity and because of the curiosity and because of that joy, when you prioritize play and exercise and hobbies into your day, it will increase your balance and improve your vibration, improve your magnet. How many here think, how the hell does Daryl get everything done in a day and still run a half marathon most days? Ah, oh, love it, Angela. Blow your bubbles. How many of you think, how the hell does Daryl get it all done in one day? Literally, it's probably his vibration. You know, when they talk about unicorn farts, I literally like think that Daryl's got a unicorn fart, like all this man magic that comes out from him of all the energy that it puts under him and his Fart just like unicorn fart just blows him like into infinity so that he can effortlessly do and create and connect people and speak to a thousand people a day. Like, how does that happen, right? Unicorn farts. So, what I would like you to consider is how is your unicorn fart right now? Because maybe you're part horse, part donkey. You know, what are you doing to make yourself a unicorn so that your farts become? <laughs> an effortless propulsion and, and fantastic vibration. So raising your vibration, increasing your frequency is all going to help you attract like-minded universal experience. Who here, when they think back to when they had drama in their life or had poverty in their life, suddenly had more of it. Like they just felt like they were so in it. Like I noticed recently, I was sitting and thinking how many less negative experience, how many less assholes and dickheads I actually am around and more amazing people that I am. And it's just based on the unicorn fart. Okay. I can't even call it unicorn farts because it's just not going to help with SEO because I'll be attracting the wrong people. So I won't even be able to call my blog that. So uh, let's have a look here. So when we try, we, so when we catch our thoughts trying to protect us, thank them. 
then dig deep down to find out where those thoughts are coming from. And just that courage alone, remember, is going to increase your frequency. And if you have a look at the Facebook page, I I, I, I actually found a diagram that they spoke about in the book that I'm reading, where they talk about the hertz and the frequency of every vibration. And the more you live in the higher frequency vibration, the more you'll attract that. And the lower you are, the more you'll attract that. And you'll notice courage is sitting in the middle, which is really awesome. So go ahead and look at um, Chantelle Girardi Online Business Marketing on Facebook. So our thoughts are trying to protect us. Thank you very much. But we're going to have the courage to do something about it, to not let our thoughts run away with us. Now, here's the thing, and this to me was a big one. I actually shed a tear when I spoke to Joe uh, Parnay about it because he was talking about how we are constantly gathering proof that we are right. We are constantly gathering proof that we are right because we'd rather be right in our heads than be wrong. So I went to him and I said, okay, my twins, they've got their dad who believes this. They've got their mom who believes this. They have decided they're choosing their dad. So they will constantly be grabbing and gathering information to prove that he is right and I am wrong. Doesn't matter what I do. And I said to him, when does that stop? And he goes, it doesn't. <laughs> the only way it stops is through life experiences and the awareness of it and then changing that. Okay, so it's only through their life experiences will they one day go, well, hold on a sec. I've been gathering information to prove this, but what about this? So who here would like to be more aware of things and not just be stuck in holes all the time? I know that I do, and it does take courage. So question, what do you believe? And quiet question, what do you want to believe and focus on what you want to believe? So for me, like I thought, I just want a recipe. I want to wake up every day and I want to have a recipe. And one of the ladies created this 10, 10, 10 thing where I think it was like 10 minutes of journaling, 10 minutes of meditation and 10 minutes of reading. And I went, that's great. But I know from my 20 years in the health, wellness and fitness industry, exercise and being outdoors is a fundamental part of that. So if you want to write this down, but I will share it to you. I'm actually going to create like a recipe card and I'll share it as a in the VIP group. But you want to put in 30 minutes daily of exercise, a mix of high and low impact and intensity. So you don't just want to be doing high impact, high intensity or low, low impact, low intensity. You want to make sure that you've got a mix. Yoga, Pilates, all of that can be included in there. You want to do 10 minutes of reading or podcast per day. And literally now I say, hey, Siri, hey, Google, put on the timer for 10 minutes and I read for 10 minutes. I just set the timer and I do it. 10 minutes oh, starting now. 10 minutes starting now. She's listening to me. Just end there. Sorry, Siri, confuse you. Um, literally, I ask and I just do 10, 10, 10. And before I get up or do anything. So reading or podcast, 10 minutes of mindfulness of breath work. And yes, I am in the process for the VIPs securing the um, breathwork guy. Uh, he's in the process of moving his Friday appointment so he can see us at Friday's one o'clock uh, Queensland time. Um, 10 minutes of journaling or future pacing the day. So vision boarding and future pacing the type of day that you want to have the next day. 10 minutes of nutrition. And again, this is because um, Ziggy. This is because, um, you know, obviously I, I, you know, health, wellness, fitness, really important part of me, but 10 minutes a day focusing on your nutrition. So whether or not that is meal planning, prepping your water, taking your supplements, I just thought I really wanted to put that in there because I think sometimes we neglect that. 10 minutes of gratitude, reflect and next day planning, which should be done at the end of the day. And then 10 the 10 sales focused activities I want to do per day. Now that goal I've put in there for myself, but I, I just love a recipe. So I'll put that together for myself. If you like it, use it. If you don't mix up the numbers If 30 minutes is too much for exercising for you right now. Don't do it. Like whatever feels right to you. But for me personally, this felt right. And I was like, I need to do 10 sales focused activities per day. Okay. It's almost like you can't have your wine at the end of the day, unless you followed the recipe, right? <laughs> so. If you stand still in your business, 
you're actually moving backwards in business. Not my slogan, can't remember who said it. Um, it is with balance and in the quiet that clarity of vision, purpose, and goals will come to light. It is only with balance and clarity. This morning, I was running and I wrote two pages worth of content today when I got back because it just, you know, it's in the quiet. That's the other thing I decided to do, guys. I've always had my notifications off my phone, but now when I exercise, I actually don't have my phone with me for 30 minutes. So if I'm doing anything on the recipe, I don't have my phone with me. It is completely 100% away from me. And all notifications and vibrations are always turned off because I don't answer to my phone. Um, I don't answer to my phone. I do what I want to do in my allocated times. But it's only in the bat, it's only with balance and in the quiet that you can have clarity, vision, purpose, and goals will come to light. Really, really important. So you have to know your focus each day. And I think part of that recipe is each day looking at what your true focus is for that day so that you turn your magnet on. Turn your magnet on. You know, in those crime movies, they've got like a, mag a magnetic truck and they drive down the road and then like an armored vehicle with money comes by and then they turn the magnet on and the car like comes up against it. Um, it's the same thing. You've got to turn your magnet on. And the way to do that is to know what your focus is each day. And this actually came from Swish, but they were talking about the night before. They said doing it before you go to bed at night, focusing on a reflection, gratitude, and then focus for the next day. So know your focus. All right. So the second thing was um, to delve more into this egocentric versus heart-centric is there's this guy called Maurice Goldberg. And I, I messaged Daryl and I said, oh my gosh, this guy was so good. And he was talking about unconscious self-sabotage, but he didn't call it unconscious self-sabotage. He called it how to make a year's worth of income in one month. Now, who would go to that talk? Okay. How to make a year's worth in one month. I was like, I circled it. They give you, they give you a sheet and you can choose all the speakers. There's something like, oh, there's so many speakers, 36 speakers. And every session you've got to choose one. And I was like, I'm in for this guy, Maurice. Like he's my man. And I get there and I actually got so annoyed because what he was talking about was not what I wanted to hear, all right? He kept talking about how if you have a full bucket, if your bucket's full, you cannot pour any more water into it. So you have to pour out water or pour out what's inside before you can fill it up with what you want. And if you don't, it's just going to keep leaking so say, for example, you've got a full beer and you want to pour wine into it, all you're going to have is a mixture of wine and beer that nobody wants to drink, and it's all going to be a mix and running all over the floor. But if you wanted to have the wine, you've got to pour out all the beer first. So we've got to get rid of what we don't want, and we have to put more into our lives of what we do want. So again, he was talking around mindfulness and thoughts and um, and what your purpose in life truly is. And I kept thinking... Just tell me how to make a year's worth of money in one month. And then I thought, okay, ego is getting in the way here. This guy has made millions and millions of dollars. And in fact, he wasn't even upselling a product or service at the end because he says he doesn't work with anyone anymore. He just educates and spies because he has enough money. And I went, if he says this is the way to do it, then I need to pay more attention to this. Okay, so get a piece of paper and write this down as I go through it, even if you're just jotting down one or two words. Okay, I'm going to ask questions and jot it down. But what is the purpose of your life? What is the purpose of your life? Why do you do what you do? Ziggy. Why do you do what you do? And it's not about you. Why do you do what you do for the world? It's not about you. Egocentric's about you. I want to make money for my family. I want to educate and inspire people to be better in marketing. 
so they can make more money. It's about your purpose for the world. It's not about money. It's about making a difference. What is your gift and contribution to the world? What is your gift and contribution to the world? What do you love about your business and what it does for others? How non-egocentric is this? Like, What do you love about your business and what it does for others? What it does for others. What impact do you make by doing what you do? How does that impact the world? Because he believes that if you understand the above, you will start to experience miracles and money will flow. It will just flow if it is heart centric and not egocentric. Alison's got like such a big smile on her face. She's like, <laughs> so you have to make the decision to flick the universal light switch. So that light, life meets you. So life will not meet you until you flip that universal light switch by making a decision to lead a purposeful and impactful life. But when we start, when fear and our thoughts and everything starts coming back into us and we start going, me, I, me, I, me, I, me, I, sales, universal energy closed, light switch off. Magnet turned off. We are creating friction in our flow by focusing on the eye. When we focus on the eye, we create friction, we create rapids and obstacles. Fulfill your life's purpose and unstoppable transformations and unexpected miracles will flow. You do not need time to make money. That is a belief. You need time to make money. Some people believe that they can't make more money because they have no more time. And that in itself is an ups, un, a subconscious belief which is holding you back. You don't need to have time to make money. Money can flow regardless when it is heart-centric, not ego-centric. Okay, so honestly, I sat there with this guy and I just went like, <gasps> and then I said to him, you're so annoying. And I told him in front of everyone and, they, you know, everyone else is conservative and I'm not. Um, they, I went, you're so annoying. I said, you sound like my partner. He always says that when you're smiley and you're happy, and you focus on the outcomes of your customers and less on making sales, money just flows. And I was like, it's so annoying. And he said, oh, your partner sounds like a stellar dude. And I went. <laughs> um, cool. So honestly, I mean, there's just a lot in here, but I was just, I just wanted him just to tell me how to make a year's worth of money in a month. And he was like, this is the recipe. And I was like, just follow the recipe. Just follow the recipe. They did not come out. These millionaires did not come out to bullshit us all, to trick us, to pull the wool over our faces like they didn't. They came there to tell us what they wish they'd known their whole lives. That's why they took time out of their busy schedules. So follow the recipe. Okay, number three was just a quick takeaway. I can't remember her name. Um, but she was talking about, you know, improving your profits um, and, you know, spoke about Profit First, obviously, which is very good. Um, but she said she's got this simple little thing that she used, and I thought maybe it'll help some of you. She just said, imagine if you increased your income by 1%, you reduced the cost of your goods by 1%, and you reduced your general cost by 1%. How much of a difference financially would that make in your business? So increase your income just by 1%. Reduce costs of goods by 1%, reduce general costs by 
So if you just start with that, if you're not doing profit first, start with that because that's just a real simple way to get started. Another suggestion for her was to put your prices up every quarter by 1%. I just think about all the tech admin that would have to go for, for doing that and all everything I'd have to change. Um, well, right. Sorry. 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 Yeah, go, Angela. Increase income, reduce cost of goods and? Reduce general costs. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for sharing. Shivani Gupta, that was right. Thank you, Kim, for sharing. All right, let's have a look here. Cool. So then there's the Timely Tech, which is a whole bunch of new tech that's around. Uh, most of you have heard about chat GPT. And for those of you who would have seen on Facebook, I wrote my comments about it, my concerns about it. And my comments are concerns is, is that lazy business owners are going to use this as an opportunity for a robot to write their content. And you can imagine that if a... Um, so, for example, if I, and this actually was a true story, it did happen. I belong, I'm on two email lists for drip coffee companies and these bags that I buy when we go unpowered, uh, we use these drip coffee bags. And both of them sent out an email and the email was the same. And the one guy had actually said, I asked chat GPT uh, why you should drink um, drip coffee and this is what it said. And you could see that this other person had asked exactly the same thing. So what's going to happen is you're going to have cookie cutter content coming across emails, coming into socials, even on blogs. And you can imagine what that's going to do for algorithms and AI. I think it's good. I think it's going to push all of them down and back. Um, because although it's a great tool and it will help you with your content. So I was talking to Kim about it when we were there. By all means, go and use the resource. It's free. You can log in and you can give it prompts and it will create content for you. And you can even ask it to speak, uh, to write it in a different tone. But the more prompts you give it, the more personalized you will make it for you and your brand. And the more input you give it will help it uh, effectively communicate who you are and what you do. So... I really feel like it is a tool. It is a great tool. You may use it, but at the end of the day, I think it's really important um, for you still, I always say business owners need to own their business, own your business, know how to effectively communicate your business. By all means, use it as a tool, but make that content your own, okay? It is free. Um, you can pay $20 a month in order to have it. Set up a free account. Uh, create your account, give it a prompt, and um, it, it, it is, honestly, it is a fabulous tool. But again, please make it your own. Please make sure that it has the same tone. I spoke to one of these millionaire business owners that were there, and they said, oh, I'm going to give this to my copywriter to write my emails. And then I said, well, how's your copywriter doing emails right now? And she said, he has a very hard tone that's not cutting through to my audience. And then I had a look at the emails and I was like, oh my gosh, it doesn't even sound like it's her and it's a him that he's writing on her behalf. And then I kind of thought maybe he's using it already. Like maybe he's already using chat GBT and she's paying all this money. Who would know? Um, but at the end of the day, I, I say, you know, get your key messages right, get your brand, your tone and everything else right. Okay, so some of the other tech that was really good. Um, Text.com. Um, is, a way, is a place where you can keep all your messages in one place. So I do want to check this out. I'm not sure if it's free or paid. I haven't had a chance to look yet. But text.com um, will keep all your messages in one place. So messages from Facebook, from LinkedIn, uh, and everyone in one place. I definitely want to have a look at that one. Free stock videos. You know, I've spoken to you before about Giphy. Uh, this particular one is called videovo.net. So videover.net bittyover.ovo.net. Uh, there we go. Daryl's answering small fee on the text one. Getyarn.io is famous one-liners. And I thought that's pretty cool. So say there's a one-liner like, um, I don't know, whatever. Like I, I often quote Einstein, you know, definition of insanities, doing the same thing, expecting a different result. You can go on to getyarn.io. 
um, and they will have famous one-liners or whatever and, and, and images or graphics to go with it. So um, that were really good to add some humor into your, um, into your content. So, for example, if you say something like, ain't got no time for that, you know, there might be a squirrel, a bear, like Arnold Schwarzenegger or whatever, ain't got no time for that. So have a look at that one. Uh, I'm just seeing which over here. Okay, naming your business. So say you want to name a business or a product. Um, I don't like creative name calling. Uh, I actually had a look at one of the Fit Hub subcontractors while I was flying, and she's launched a new program. Literally, she's called it Program 1, Program 2, Program 3. <laughs> I don't like that either. But I don't like it when you call a program um, Schware, you know, um, the Schware program or whatever. Like it's, it, I still believe it should, it is what it is. So, um, but have a look at this one. It's called Namelix. So N A M E L I X dot com is a business name generator. So maybe Leah might be looking for candle names and she could go into there and have a look. Uh, logo.com does AR logo designer. I went in because, you know, for years I've been trying to do a logo and I just, it's like a tattoo, Jane. I just can't commit. Um, you know, Jane's got her B tattoo now. Uh, the closest I ever came to was getting a lotus on my wrist. Um, but logo.com is an AI logo designer. So you've still got to give it feedback and prompts and tone and colors, and then it will create something for you. A background replacer. So say, for example, I don't know, you've got a candle and in the background of the candle, you've got the um, you've got a car and you want to remove the uh, re uh, remove the car and put something else in the background. Background replacer is called Mocker.ai. So M-O-K-K-E-R.ai, Mocker.ai. There's a music maker, which is really cool. I thought this is really good because it does make um, it does make uh, non-royalty, a uh, royalty-free music that you can use. So it's called SoundDraw.io, SoundDraw.io, one word, and that's a music maker. It actually makes themes, music for your reels, for your stories. Um, Compose.ai composes email content for you. So something similar to uh, GPT. Uh, you literally just get the uh, Chrome extension and it will actually write an email for you. Compose.ai. Um, sendsteps.com will create an entire presentation for you. So if you want to do a presentation on... Um, I don't know, like I'm doing a presentation, social media for authors tomorrow. Uh, sendsteps.com will actually create the entire presentation for you. Again, not sure if these are paid or not all free, guys. You'd have to have a look at that. Media.io uh, will convert, edit, and compress files. So if you want to send or store compress things. I'll ask Daryl at the end if there's any I've left out that he thinks I should have bought in. All right. So then the last one um, is, of course, I went to another sales and scaling table, which was by Ben Shipley. And Ben Shipley, he applied a more um, practical approach to making sales. And these are some really good tips, which I thought I'd share with you. Uh, number one, stop filling your time with non-performing tasks stop filling your time with non-performing tasks stop filling your time with non-performing tasks how many of us are doing that oh my gosh so we're not making sales non-performing tasks <laughs> only performing tasks number two increase your sales process speed when did you follow up on a lead? Someone here, I won't name that person, but someone here I spoke to and said they hadn't had sales. And when we sat down, this person had two leads or inquiries, didn't follow them up. And when I made her do it, she followed them up and she messaged me and said, one of them's booked in a group program. 
Who was that person? I wonder. <laughs> no, 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 Jane, it couldn't have been you. Joan, Jane's owning it. So I thought obviously she's okay with me sharing. But she had people inquiring. So she was she was looking for more. She was looking for more leads, but two people inquired. But I'm looking for more. But two people inquired. Increase your sales process speed. Jane, did you want to say something? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for playing, Jane. <laughs> so number three, include more sales positive activities into your calendar. How many of you actually have time in your diary daily to do leads, sales, follow-ups, calls? If you want more sales, do it daily. If you want less sales, do it weekly, monthly, never. If you want more sales, do it daily. Why do you think I put in my recipe? My recipe is to do 10 more sales-focused activities per day, 10 sales-focused activities per day. Can you just explain what those 10 focused activities oh, may be? 100%. Like said, go on. Thank you. That's brilliant, Jane. Thank you for the question. That's awesome. So I did it this morning. I had a lady messaging me. I actually closed my first person I contacted this morning. I closed. Okay. It's taken me six touch points. Six touch points. This lady, uh, I'll tell you the whole story because it'll make sense. On in a Facebook group, she asked, I want a website. Everyone went, me do website. You use me now. I went and I stalked, saw that she was a spiritual person, came back, and I used feelings word. If it feels okay to you, I'd love to have a chat about that. I see you're in Madriba. We could even sit together and have that chat. Her and her daughter came here, fell in love with the dog. Seriously, I think Ziggy closed the deal, like seriously, because she fosters dogs. She said to me, her and her daughter said, we only came to you. People were direct messaging us. Are we going ahead with that? Shall we start tomorrow? Here's a payment link. And I said, tell me about your business and what you're trying to achieve. Okay. Texting her backwards and forwards. Sales focused activity. All right. Another lady said to me, she doesn't have money right now. Um, she's, she's on disability at the moment. Doesn't have any money right now. She's got an amazing business. And I said to her, she said she's struggling. She's doing sales calls. She's not closing anyone. But if she closes someone, she said she'll come work with me. Sales-focused activity, I said, I would love that. Here is my, my blog that I did last week with my training video. And here's the sales script we went through. I hope it's okay. Today, I followed up with her. How did your sales call go? Great, Chantel, thank you. I closed my first sale in three months. Okay. Do you think she's going to use me? What, was I focused on a sale or was I focused on impacting her life? I was focused on impacting her life. So that's a sales focused activity. A text, a client three months ago stopped my VIP program, VIPP program. And I messaged him and I said to him, I've been thinking about you. And I actually have been thinking about him. I've been thinking about you this weekend, wondering how you're going. And I know you were trying to land that big corporate gig. Did that ever eventuate? That is a sales-focused activity, but it's also relationship building. And I give a crap. And I may, like, I may not get him back, but I just connected. Every day, 10 people, past clients, check in on them. Current clients, check in on them. I had a client I hadn't heard from in a while, messaged her back. Hey, how's everything going? She said, working with you gave us too much business. <laughs> we weren't ready for it. We did a trade show and we normally make $35,000 at a trade show. I had one session with you. We made $75,000 worth of sales. And that is why I haven't been able to book in one-on-one -on -one calls with you over the last week because we've had to deal with that, which was just after the one session that you did. So that's a client that I was re-engaging to say, come into your sessions. I'm not going to babysit people, though. If people don't want to book their sessions, that's their thing. But I did check in with her. So, um, cool. Sales focused activity. Text messages, phone calls, following up on leads. 
Um, so that lady went ahead. She did. She paid for a website this morning. She paid cash up front for a website. Um, who else? My handyman. He came over here, sales-focused activity. He quoted on my floors. Hey, Ron. I can see him in the background. He quoted on my floors. I said to him, great. You did a great job. Can I leave a Google My Business? Oh, I don't have Google My Business. I don't have Facebook, and I don't have a website. What did I do? Straight away sent him sales-focused activity. Hey, it was great to meet with you. Here's an example of some of our work. This is why you need Google My Business. Here is a quote. Okay, so outreach, prospecting, not just attraction. Social media is attraction. We need to do more prospecting. Okay, number four, but you got to just have that time in your diary, whatever it is. I've said 10 activities. That might take me an hour, but I'm doing 10 activities. I don't know how long it'll take. I'll test it. But you might put a time and just go, you know what, 30 minutes every day or 30 minutes once a week, 30 minutes twice a week. I'm doing sales-focused activities. All right? I would imagine someone like Rachel does them daily, Daryl does them daily. Um, I think even Kim, she would be, do sales daily. Um, spend less time on leads and spend more time on sales. So stop peacocking yourself and podcasts, blogs, networking events, which is great. It's all attraction marketing. But come back and do the sales-focused activity so that it converts to making money. Because if it doesn't make money, then you're just giving it all away for free. Sales-focused activities. Uh, what number one? Number five, improve customer interaction. So it is three times harder to get a new client than it is to ret retain an old client. And that is why for e-commerce businesses, we say you need to email market, give a shit about people on your email list because they bought from you before. They must like what you've got. So why are we looking for new people? How can we nurture those relationships? And then he suggested writing your top 100 partnerships. That challenged the crap out of me. Um, for shits and giggles, I might do that on the weekend with a glass of wine. Write my top 100 partnerships. Find businesses that you want to work with and put them on a list. So not, not refer, like referral partners, maybe, but look at businesses and you go, oh my gosh, I would love to work with that business. Put them on the list. I would love to work with that business. Put them on the list. I'd love to work with that business. Put them on the list. 100 partnerships. Cool. So there were a whole bunch of other things like um, Instagram reels, but we're going to do that next week because next week's masterclass is on Facebook and Instagram. There's been some changes in Facebook, some changes in Instagram, and we haven't done it for such a long time. So I thought I would include that in next week's session. So we're going to be doing Facebook and Instagram next week um, and some of the new changes. And I might not have noticed them all and I might have a different version to you. So please feel free to share in that session. Um, there was also content on coaching staff and dealing with staff and better staff communication. So in my one-on-ones with you, those who've got staff, I can help you with that as well. There was also a presentation I went on negotiating. So I can also include that in any of our one-on-ones if it's relevant. I literally just chose what I found was the most um, important, I think, for this session. So I'm going to say goodbye to uh, those that are watching uh, on YouTube or on the podcast. Um, if they want to join in the live audience, you've got to be a VIP or a VIPP where you can network, collaborate, join our group and interact daily as well as just once a week um, and have your say.